All right, students, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be talking about the law of conservation of energy. So make sure you have your notebook out, you've turned to the proper page, and let's go ahead and take some notes. So the law of conservation of energy is very similar to the law of conservation of mass, but instead of talking about mass, we're talking about energy. And there's kind of two parts, so I split it up. It's really one sentence, but I want to split it up. It says, energy is not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction between reactants and products. Sound familiar? Well, previously it was mass, and now it's energy. So both mass and energy are conserved in a chemical reaction. Now, the next part, and this is the part that's kind of hard to understand, which is we're going to talk a lot about a lot in this uh, video, is energy can be transferred to, which is gained, or lost from a chemical reaction. So what do we mean by that? Well, here we have a couple of reactants. So here is, on the left side, uh, cobalt-2 chloride, which is a solid, a kind of purpley, salty thing, which is kind of cool. And then on the right side, we have sodium silicate, which is this aqueous solution. So basically, it's just another type of salt dissolved in water. Now, if you take cobalt-2 chloride and put it in sodium silicate, it actually does something pretty kind of cool. Now, when you look at them now, they don't look very interesting. But when they actually react, we're going to kind of zoom in and see the reaction. This is what happens. It's actually really kind of a cool-looking reaction. Now, notice all these things going on. How does this even happen? I mean, we have these two kind of things, these two substances that aren't doing much, but when put together, they start doing crazy stuff. They start doing reactions. And this is true for many substances. Uh, some of them gain energy, some of them lose energy. And, uh, but where's all this energy coming from? If energy is supposed to be conserved, how are they magically having energy? Well, it's not magic per se. Uh, it all deals with energy. First, let's talk about what energy is. Energy is the amount of movement of the molecules. Huh, that should sound familiar to you. We've talked about moving molecules, uh, namely the kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic meaning movement. So another way to think about this is what happens when those molecules are moving? Well, the faster they move, the more energy they have, and they start to heat up. And the slower they move, the less energy they have, and they start to cool down. So in other words, energy not only is the movement of molecules, it's really heat. So in chemistry and physical science, when we're talking about energy, we're really just talking about heat or heat energy. So let's talk about this in terms of a reaction. So here we have an Erlenmeyer flask with a, a substance in it. Now, I just want to get a few de definitions out of the way so we can talk about it later. We're going to call our reaction or whatever we have our reaction is, we're going to call that the system. So our reaction is always the system. Now, everything else, all the things around the system, the things that are not necessarily part of the system, that are not part of the reaction, are called the surroundings. And the reason we're specifying this is because where does the system get its energy? Well, it gets it from the surroundings. Where does it lose its energy? It loses it to the surroundings. So energy can be gained from the surroundings to the system, or energy can, can be lost from the system to the surroundings. So that's also part of the law of conservation of energy. A reaction doesn't lose or gain energy. It's just transferred in and out from itself to the surroundings or from the surroundings. So this is an extremely one of two extremely important diagrams, and you need to know what's going on here. So take a moment here, look at it, see if you can interpret what's going on. I highly recommend thinking about first what are the independent and the dependent variables. Well, if you recall here, we have the reaction progression, which is the independent variable, and energy, which is the dependent variable. So basically what this is testing, it's saying, what's the energy? What's happening to the energy over the reaction progression, right? So the reaction progression is happening, and we're wondering what's happening to the energy in this diagram here. Also, it says the figure below is for a reaction, A plus B equals C. So here on the left side, we have A plus B, which is the reactants. Now, after the reaction happened or over the reaction progression, A plus B is going to go and become C, the product. So A plus B eventually becomes C. So look at what's going on here. Here we see that energy is changing, right? So A plus B, over time, the energy goes up. At the end of the reaction, so after A plus B, the reactants transform or convert itself, change into C, we have more energy. This is what is called an endothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs 
or gains energy from its surroundings. Energy is a reactant of this reaction. So here you can think of it like this, A plus B plus energy, right? Because this reaction gained energy. So A plus B plus some energy, it was able to convert itself to some C, to, to, to the product C. So A plus B are reactants. Those are our first beginning ingredients, plus a little bit of energy, right? We had to add some energy in order for it to become C. That is an endothermic reaction. By the way, this delta H here, I want to talk about that for a second. You'll see this symbol here. That just represents a change. This, this triangle or this, this symbol called delta just represents a change in something. And H is heat or heat energy. So the change in heat energy. So what's happening in the change in heat energy? Heat energy is going up in this scenario over the reaction progression. So a little thought prop for you. I want you to think about this for a second. How would an endothermic reaction feel to you? Now, I'll give you a big hint. Think about this in terms of the system and the surroundings. The reaction itself is the system, and you are the surroundings of the system. So how, what would happen? How would, you, how would the surroundings feel? Where is the energy being transferred from and to? Well, if you think about it, because the reaction is gaining energy from its surroundings, it's endothermic. Remember, it's gaining energy. It's taking energy away. It, or the reaction, the system, would be stealing heat energy from your hand. So if you touch it, the reaction is literally taking energy away from your hand. So your hand, the molecules in your hand are slowing down and feeling cold. But in the system, the molecules are speeding up. So... That's kind of cool. So endothermic reactions, even though their molecules are speeding up, the surroundings or your hand it would cause the reaction to feel cold. Here's an example of an endothermic reaction. I just want to show you this quick video here. So this is between barium hydroxide and uh, ammonium chloride. Now, if you see here, they're going to take a little bit of water and put it on this block. And the reason they're doing that is because they want to show you that it's going to create such a cold intensity that it's going to basically freeze itself to the block. So they're going to add barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride together, mix it. Um, I think there's a little bit of water in the beaker, but there's definitely water on the block. And then what happens is, is when they sit it on the block, the reaction becomes so cold that it freezes that water on the block and actually freezes the beaker onto the block. So this is an endothermic reaction. It's so cold. It feels cold, but it's really stealing energy from its surroundings. Uh, you can actually see right here the delta H is a positive value. It's gaining energy. Here's another graph, um, and I want you to be able to understand this graph as well. This is the second type of graph you need to be able to see and understand. It's very similar to the first graph, but we're going to see a difference. So see if you can interpret what's going on here. Here again, we have a, a similar reaction. A plus B goes to C, and it doesn't have to be the same reaction as before. In fact, this is definitely a different one, but uh, same kind of general reaction type. Here we have, again, the reaction progression is the independent value and energy is the dependent. So we're trying to see what happens to energy after a reaction happens. So here we have our reactants, A plus B. This is where we start. Now, as the reaction progresses, it gains a little bit of energy, but overall, boom, it kind of plummets and the energy goes way down. So here we have that delta H. What happens to the change in energy? Is it gaining energy or is it losing energy? If you said that overall it lost energy, you would be absolutely correct. And this is the other type of reaction you need to know about. This is called an exothermic reaction. I like to think of exothermic, think of the word exit. Exit means to go out. So exothermic reaction is one that loses or energy goes out of the reaction. So a reaction that loses or releases energy to surround is, is an exothermic reaction. In this instance, energy is usually product. So we might think of it like this. Our reactants A plus B will produce C, and it will also produce energy because energy leaves the reaction. So how would an exothermic reaction feel to you? Well, it's just the opposite. Because the reaction is losing energy to its surroundings, it's giving off heat. So your hand, when it gets close to it, will feel that energy being released. Now, my favorite example of this is a fire. Think about this. The energy is being released from those logs. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot and took good notes. Ask Teapop if you have any questions. See you later, guys.